let the mind settle down on the breath comfortably. In other words, don't push it too hard and don't let it float away. Try to find just the right amount of pressure for staying with the breath. Let there be just that one question in the mind right now. How heavily to focus on the breath. Other questions you can put aside. Because most of the other questions you'd be focusing on now would simply it'd be issues of doubt. But questions dealing with the mind and the breath right here in the present moment, those are the ones that are relevant, because those are the ones that you can look at and answer right now, right here. The point of our practice is to gain discernment that leads to, to liberation, it leads to release. But before we get to that level of discernment, we have to train the discernment we have in every level of the practice. This morning there was a passage by John Lee that we're reading, in which he talks about how generosity, virtue, and meditation both depend on discernment and give rise to discernment. In other words, it means you have to use your discernment in each of these levels of the practice. And it's not that you just have to wait till the very end of the practice before the discernment suddenly lands on you. You take the discernment you've got, you exercise it, it gets stronger. Just like exercising your body. You want a strong body, what do you do? You take the weak body you've got, exercise it, and it turns into a stronger body, step by step by step, because you use it. But it also means learning how to use it properly. In other words, you don't exercise it too heavily to the point where you burn out. So at each level of practice, there are questions you want to ask that are appropriate to that level of practice. Like when you're practicing generosity, you have to ask yourself, well, what is just right right now? How much can I afford? How much is giving too much? And in what ways is my gift going to be most beneficial, most effective? And if I don't have much to give, well, in terms of material things, what other things can I give? That can many times be more useful than the material things. That's developing skill and insight and discernment on the level of generosity. Then the level of precepts works up to a higher level. How am I going to maintain my precepts in difficult situations? Say when people ask questions that you know might be harmful if you answer them, how are you going to avoid the answer so that you don't lie? Or how are you going to live in your house so you don't have to kill pests? Once you've laid down the law for yourself, okay, these are the principles I'm going to hold to. You suddenly find yourself with a whole new set of questions. And it requires your ingenuity and discernment to answer them. And as you do answer them, you find that your ingenuity and discernment get a lot stronger. The same principle holds with meditation. Each step in the meditation requires certain questions. And you take the questions bit by bit by bit, step by step. And you find that not only does the meditation require discernment, but also gives rise to a stronger discernment as you use it. Like when we're focusing on the breath. Simple question, what kind of breath feels good right now? And now you explore. You're free to experiment with the breath. To find out if long breathing feels good, if short breathing feels good. Deep, shallow. So there's an element of investigation already, even in the simple practice of concentration. It's not that you make the mind really, really still and somehow discernment's going to go off like a light bulb. There has to be some discernment involved in the process of getting the mind to settle down. As the Buddha says, there's no jhana without discernment, no discernment without jhana. The two have to go together. Discernment here is learning which things to develop and which things to let go. And you start out with really simple things. You don't have to worry about qualities in the mind yet. Just worry about what's the breathing like? What kind of breathing does the body need right now? If your energy level feels low, okay, what kind of breathing can raise the energy level? 
If you feel a bit too frenetic, what kind of breathing can calm you down? If the pain's in different parts of the body, well, are you breathing in a way that's actually augmenting those pains or causing those pains? These are things you can explore. So what you're doing is you're taking your thinking process, the questioning process of the mind, and you're learning to how to use it skillfully. Meditation is not a matter of stopping your thought processes right away. Eventually there does come a point where thinking gets more and more attenuated until you can hardly call it thinking at all. But in the meantime, before you can get there, you have to learn how to use your thinking skillfully. So you apply it to the issue of concentration. Apply it to the issue of getting the mind to settle down. It's a basic principle in a lot of the Buddhist teachings. Before you learn how to let go of something, you've got to learn how to do it skillfully. They talk about going beyond precepts and practices in the practice. Okay, before you can go beyond them, you have to learn how to maintain your precepts with skill. They talk about letting go of the discriminating mind. Well, before you let go of the discriminating mind, you have to learn how to use it properly. Learning how to let go of desire, you have to learn how to use your desire properly. Focus it on the causes that will get you where you want to go. Unskillful use of desire means that you focus so much on the results you want that you ignore the causes. You want to skip over them. That kind of desire is unskillful. And you're not going to get beyond desire by just dropping unskillful desires. You have to learn how to replace them with skillful ones that are focused on the causes that will take you where you want to go, like right now. Focus on being mindful, it means keeping the breath in mind, and focus on being alert, watching the breath. And a good way to do that is to ask yourself questions about the breath and how you can relate to it here in the present moment. Should you make the next breath a little bit longer? Well, see what happens. How about a little bit shorter, deeper, stronger, more refined? Just sort of ask those questions of the mind. Don't put a lot of physical pressure on the breath. Just ask that question, and you find that the asking of the question opens a possibility. This is called appropriate attention, yoni so manasikara, and it's essential to the whole practice. In fact, the very learning how to ask skillful questions. In fact, the first question you're supposed to ask when you go meet a teacher is, what is skillful? What is not skillful? What if I do it will be to my long-term happiness? What if I do it will be to my long-term suffering? And you can take those questions and st usually start on the level of the precepts or generosity, and then you work deeper and deeper into the mind. That's how deeper levels of concentration are attained, and that's how one's concentration has been attained. The discernment that gives rise to liberation comes in as well, by learning how to ask that question, what's the skillful thing to do now? Now, in order to ask those questions on the very refined levels of the mind, you have to start asking them from more blatant levels in your daily life. This is why the Buddhist teaching is not just a question of well, how, how soon can we get the experience of awakening, or how soon can we have a feeling of oneness so we can go on with the rest of our lives. That's not it at all. You have to train your whole approach to life. What is the most skillful thing to do right now? What's the most skillful thing to say? What's the most skillful thing to think? And as you learn how to keep asking that question, looking for the answers, learning from your mistakes time and again so that you gradually do become more skillful on the outer levels, you find that that habit begins to spread into your mind. So when you're sitting here and meditating, it becomes an automatic question. What's the most skillful way to relate to the breath? What's the most skillful way to relate to the present moment? And you experiment and you test, and you come up with answers. And then you test the answers. So it's a pretty basic process that starts from the outside and works in. So ultimately, it does lead to the discernment that liberates the mind totally from suffering.
that's the point where we all want to get. But it's not a question that we're just going to sit here and meditate and wait until it comes. It's the process of questioning and probing and looking and getting the mind to settle down and be really still and then ask, okay, what's where is there still a disturbance in here? What acts of mind? What decisions are the mind making? Sometimes on a very subtle level, what decisions are still getting in the way? And you look and you watch. And you have to be very patient. John Cumdee, one of the forester Johns, made a comparison one time. He says, it's like being a hunter. The hunter goes out in the forest and on the one end has to be very still so he doesn't scare off the rabbits and the other animals. But at the same time, he has to be very alert. His ears and eyes have to be very sharp. And the hunter can't say, OK, I'm just going to sit here for half an hour and I'll be able to get something. You have no idea how long it's going to take. But you maintain that attitude of quiet alertness. It's the concentration that keeps you quiet. It's that little question that keeps you alert. And the combination of the two, when you get them just right, that will lead to awakening.